What's up guys and welcome back to WBC Builds and welcome to this little mini series I have for you all about this beautiful Victorian house I'm standing in front of right now. So this is going to be a three part series of tutorials on how to build this one. You are currently watching part one so in this part I'll be building the ground floor and the basement level along with this lovely porch I'm currently standing on. In part two we will do the upper stories which will be the first floor, the second floor and then the roof and in part three I'll get around to showing you guys how to build the garden and the driveway along with a nice little orangery slash conservatory on the back of this one. So let's get into this little build. Uh, I'm going to put the material list up on screen now. That is the materials for the entirety of the house. Yes we are building it out of white concrete and wool. I know crazy stuff but the idea is it gives this really nice textured feel to a stucco on the outside of this rendered house so we'll get round to giving you another materials list for when we come round to doing part three so guys without further ado let's jump on in i'll show you how big this house is and then we can start building it okay then guys so for this build i recommend placing a little bit of a platform below the building itself so in case you are building it on a super flat world you can actually get yourself a nice basement in there so that's what i'm doing right now just placing down some cylinders of grass using world edit and i can't stress this enough i recommend world edit for a lot of people who want to be building in creative now, it is a mod but it's really worth having just to make your life so much easier for doing builds, especially ones on this sort of size. So let's jump on in and let me show you how big this build actually is. So over here on the ground, I now have the actual building itself in the outline. Uh, I've placed the red in the corners that are the most important and we can measure them off from there. So you can see it's a mirror across the center axis there. So we've got two villas here in actual fact, it's not just one house. So starting off here, you're going to be measuring yourself out 11 blocks across the front, red to red. Now that's forming the main window section, the main part of the build. This section here is going to be the porch area. So what you want to do, measure yourself back four blocks like so, red to red. Then across the back here, you want to measure out six blocks. So we can have two in the middle here for the door. We'll get back to that later on. From these six blocks across, you go up three more here to reach the second section of the house. Now across the front here, you want to go back uh, 10 more blocks this side and then down from that corner to this one, it's a nice 16 blocks. Across the back here, you want to go across three like so and then you're left with a little extension here at the back. You take that back to seven. Across the front here it should be eight and then you drop it back again five blocks here to meet the main wall of the building. So you can see those two are in line. This is a bit more of a sort of half section of the house. So across the back here, you want to be going 31 blocks across the whole thing. So that's between both houses or 16 blocks to the center there. So you've got 15 either side. Now coming round to this section here, we're up again, five blocks across the back here, eight down this way, seven and across here, three. And then you've got 16 blocks back down here because it is the exact mirror of the other side. And then we go across the front here, 10 more blocks, drop it back by three come across here six and then drop it up this way four and then we're meeting ourselves back again 11 blocks over this way so you've got 10 either side of the center so it may look quite large and it is so we're gonna have some fun building this so we're gonna start with digging out the basement then I'll put the floor plan in down there and we can move on up to the upper floors of this build so let's jump into a little time lapse showing that so for this basement we want to be excavating four blocks down of dirt and that gives you a nice ceiling to height difference of a normal room. Okay, so we're back from digging out the basement level. You can see here, we've gone back down from the top here, four blocks like so, and then this will be whatever floor you want it to be. So I'm just gonna set it off to a dark oak, and that's my usual go-to colorings. Uh, the walls can even be made out of whatever block you choose. I'm gonna choose a mixture of bricks and granite. So I'm just typing that command in there, 45 and granite. And this just gives you a nice little covering of bricks and also granite. So you can get a nice bit of texturing in the walls. And again, you can always do this in survival if you need to. So I'm just gonna go around and add this texture to all the walls. And I'm gonna jump back and I'll show you what's going on with the front of the building. Okay, so we are back. Now it's time to actually put the area in at the front of this building here. So the area is a part of the building where it allows you to walk from the top down to the basement on the outside, very common in the Georgian period. And what we've got here is we've come out from this, from this red block here to this one, four blocks. So we've got a nice section of two blocks in between. 
I'm going to dig this back out down to the four, um, down to the same floor level as we've got over there. So we're going to set that at zero and then stack that three down. So that's taken us one level lower and that is fine. We can then come back in here and set this to a mixture of one and and the site, which looks quite nice as a sort of floor. And we can do the same with these walls here. Set them to whatever texture you want. I'm going to use the same sort of texture here and then maybe put some brick on the wall over here. Now, again, you don't have to do any of this like this. You can choose whatever you want for this sort of exterior section. Uh, see this as a guide to build rather than as a full block to block tutorial if you wish to change anything up. OK, so what we're going to do now is put the stairs in down. Later on, we will actually add these stairs higher up. So this block, this whole section here goes up by one like that when we get to the porch in a moment. So what I'm going to do is bring these stairs down. So you should be counting five stairs. One, two, three, four, and then five. Perfect. And now what's going to happen is you wander down these stairs and you come to the front door, which is going to be under here. So what happens usually is the doors are exactly the same positions as they would be above. So we need to dig out all of this ground here and we can now go back this way, two blocks like so, and you come into the building itself. And you shouldn't be left with like a little little alleyway, a little archway here. Uh, and this is just, again, a typical of the style. And also it's just what I've chosen to do for this bit of the build. So you're going to fill in all of this wall here with brick or whatever you choose for the interior section. And you have a bit of a low ceiling there, but that's okay. It's all going to work out in the end. Uh, this area, again, you're going to want to put that into probably a nice dark oak floor again. And that gives you your basement entrance. So we can knock out all of this dirt here. You don't need it. You just need that bit there to maintain the wall uh, because obviously that's like a load-bearing wall. Under here, we're going to come back and put in some wall coverings up there later on so it looks a little bit nicer. So you're going to grab out the first door of this build, which is the dark oak door here. And that sits underneath all of this, so you end up with a nice bit like that. So before we go any further, it's time to put in the first window as well, which will sit in the center of this wall right here. Now, the reason I've kept this wall here as brick is because in a second, we need to change it all into white concrete powder and wall, which is the main accent block of this whole build. So along the bottom of this wall, we want to be knocking out some of this brick level and putting in some polished diorite, uh, polished andesite. And then in the center of this, so we've got eight blocks across here, so we need to find the center, which should be here, and knock out these blocks like so. So we're going to moving on to the bit of the video where I say, if you're building this in survival, good luck with it. It's going to be quite a tricky one to do. Now, what I am going to do is something that requires cheats to be enabled in the game, and that is using iron trapdoors for window frames. Now, you technically do not need to use these at all. They are just there for aesthetics, apart from one window, which is the window above here. We'll get onto that in a bit. Now, my main choice is because they look so good. Now, if I get out the debug stick, which you can do by saying give your player. So for me, it's WBC builds, and then you can give them whatever block you've got. And I want to go for a debug stick. So I want to go for the debug stick. Now, I have a whole video on how to use this um, over on my channel. So if you do want to have a look at that, you can always check that out. But what the idea is, you cycle around, click open, and then right click, and it opens the iron trap doors. So you no longer have to have a redstone current to them. What you can ultimately do if you want to use window boxes while playing in survival is either go for a darker variant or a lighter variant. Depends on whether you want it to sort of blend with the build or not. So if we do it like that, and we can change this wall here into the actual color it should be, which is set to white concrete powder and wall. So you can just type the word white for this and it will change it up like so. And you get this nice coloring. Uh, you can then use maybe birch as well to offset that. But as you can see, this really does blend well with this color. It is almost perfect. So you can also use a darker variant if you wish. And this again does work. It's not going to look absolutely amazing as window frames at this period tend to be t painted with white or a lighter color, but they can also be painted a darker color as well. So if you are looking for alternatives to build this in survival, I suggest either the spruce trap door or the birch trap door. So with that being said, I am going to carry on with the iron trap doors for those who can use the debug stick and also those who wish to replicate this exactly. So let's get this window in. It's three blocks high like so. So with the window in place, it's now time to place the blocks across the top of it. The reason I have been using uh, trap doors around here is to stop the concrete powder from falling through. As you can see there, I've just dropped some. 
this doesn't really affect this build too much because you can use the white wall as the wall instead above it or even use some smooth quartz as well and that gives you a nice little window frame uh, on the upper levels we will be using the white quartz as the main block but for this one you can just use a mixture again so now it's time for me to show you what happens on the inside it's a case of placing the actual floor plan in but first of all we need to go to the back over here and do something similar to what we've done at the front there this isn't going to have a staircase down to it though what it's going to have is just be a sort of open air area so people can come out of the basement and get a bit of fresh air without going into the garden because this is where the service workers are working and we don't really want the cooks and the chefs to mingle with the actual household so what i'm doing here is i'm counting out five blocks from the edge of the building from red to red it gives us a nice three by three square down here it's not three by three but it's, it's a three wide square so we're going to dig that out and stack that down by three and that will give us the floor level and from there we can then turn this into the same stuff as we did at the front so the stone and the andesite and this wall here will also need to be turned into the same way uh, as we've done around the front so there's going to be a window sitting here but it's going to be offset by one because we're going to have a doorway in here so let me just place all these blocks in so we're going to use polished andesite here for the base again this window is three blocks high using the iron trap doors as i mentioned previously and we've got the same over this side that gives you that window there above the top we're going to be placing in the white concrete once i've set this to it so let's change this up now to a nice white concrete wall mix uh, we need to put the place the door in first before we do this side or else we're going to have a massive collapse now that is obviously the issue of using white concrete powder for anything in a build um, and that is the fact that it can turn suddenly into a falling block um, it just looks so good. That's the whole reason I want to use it because it is just a, such a nice color to it So there's that wall now and we can just carry this across the top So you can either use white concrete powder or any other block of your choosing across here As long as it is white wall and that gives us this little area at the back So people can come out and have their little break a little bit of fresh air and whatnot So we're going to set these walls again to uh, one So we're going to set these walls again to granite and uh, bricks just to help break that up a little bit give a bit of texture to this area and we will be back later on to finish off that section uh, with some railings around it but for now let me jump into a quick time lapse to get this basement level sorted so I can show you guys what rooms there are okay so we've got the floor plan in now for the basement level I know we're only on the basement level still this build is huge so what I'm gonna do is instead of building both sides of this building simultaneously I will be doing a copy and paste with world edit and I'll show you guys how to do that if you aren't too familiar with that one it is just because it is such a mirror and also we don't want this video running over an hour long now do we so coming down here into the actual basement we've got several rooms so this room here is the kitchen and you can see I've double skinned the walls where we have the windows now that is so you can actually add panes of glass in behind the trap doors and this gives you a bit of depth to the window as well it really does pick up quite nicely when you have shaders on so what we can see here is I've left a two wide corridor sorry I've left a three wide corridor in here and we've got a room on this side this is going to be a kitchen uh, the sort of the kitchen workers bedroom or maybe even a shared room with lots of people in and that is seven blocks off this wall here and then another 10 blocks down this way sorry 11 blocks down that way we then have two smaller rooms here one could be a toilet one could be a cupboard again this smaller this bigger one is about five blocks there this one's three and they're both three blocks off of the back you've then got the the corridor comes around this way to the staircase and that goes up to the main floor of the house we'll get onto that obviously in a bit but you come back down the stairs and you go on round and you've got two more little rooms here could be a cupboard uh, could be a laundry room or like a little parlor for the kitchen but then like I said you've got the kitchen which takes up most of the space of this side of the house and it's just a good little space user and also it's really nice and got the windows in it so you get a lot of light in there anyway so this is actually probably the first tutorial I've done with an interior in it's very requested throughout my builds I am not very good at them but we will see how this one goes so jot that one down and put that into your basement now I'm going to copy and paste it over to the other side so we can get an idea of how this whole thing looks and then we're going to start building up the first section upstairs which would be the porch 
So in order to copy and paste this floor, I've selected two points. Uh, I've gone for the back corner over here, and then I've gone, oh, I haven't, I've gone for the back corner over here, and I've gone for this corner over this way. Uh, it doesn't include the walls, but I think that should be all right for what we're doing, because we have the outer walls there. So I'm gonna stand on the local point here, which is the midpoint, and I'm gonna type this command. So copy, simple enough. And then we're gonna do a flip, and we wanna flip it in the direction of left. So we type L for flip left, and then you just paste that away like so and you end up with just the floor for the basement okay hang on <laughs> jump cut <laughs> okay so what i'd misplaced was i did two points on the actual same plane so i've now right clicked on this one so this is our second point so it's time now to actually repeat that so copy and then flip left and then paste and hey presto we actually have some rooms in here now a bit of tidying up required around the front but we can sort that out later on but we've now got ourselves a flipped building and as you can see it's huge so let's jump on now and start doing this upper section up here okay so first okay so first correction of this build hopefully the last the issue here is i forgot to say it actually needs to go up by two blocks here not just the one that we had so before we had five stairs down to the basement level it actually needs to be six because then we come up to this level here what we want to do next is actually add the railing that goes around this section. So in the corners like this, add some normal dia uh, polished andesite. And then what we want to do is go down and select some unpolished andesite stairs. And these goes across like that and form quite a nice little railing around there. And on top of those, you place down some smooth, so some polished andesite slabs. And that just brings up the whole build to a bit more of a grey feeling to it. So we're going to get on with the porch now itself. What you want to do is make sure you have six blocks out from this wall. So we've got three currently. We need another three. One, two, three. And you can see we need to carry this on around this way. So when you get to this point here, it needs to go out one more and then drop back. So it's not in line with that, but it is in line with the actual um, doorway here. So I keep pointing back at these two blocks, and that's because this is the doorway into the main building itself. <coughs> So we need to carry on this way all the way down to the other side of the building. So this drops back by two blocks and you carry on all the way down to the other side here. Go to the centre and you're left with like a nice little porchway in there so you can walk along it. Uh, we're going to pave this in a second. We need to bring it all up by one more level again and then go around. And don't worry, it's not going to be polished and the site all of it because it doesn't look like a great texture, does it? So what we want to do next is go through and start texturing this wall. So we're going to get rid of all of the polished andesite and replace it with normal andesite and then make uh, make two little alcoves like this so you end up with a nice little bit of texture in. And what we're going to do with this is bring that up so it's the same level there and then in between these we're going to be placing in some andesite stairs. Uh, and this just again adds a little bit of depth in here so it looks like it's on some sort of raft foundation or something. A little bit, a bit different. Um, and we do a similar fashion around here again. Instead of using the walls, we're just going to be using normal andesite. Now, coming down this way, we've got to put the stairs up into the house. So in order to do that, we need to place one more bit of andesite like so, and then another two next to that. We then have a bit of polished andesite on top of that one, and then a piece of unpolished that way. And this now leads into us placing these stairs down. I'm going to use polished andesite for them, or we can use polished andesite slabs to get a bit more of a gradient down there perfect stuff one more piece of andesite like that and hey presto you've got yourself a nice little stairway up and this comes up onto this platform and we'll be filling this in in two seconds so what we want to do with the back wall here is not too much you can always use just a bit more andesite or whatever you block you've got on your hand at the time and that is because this bit of the wall never gets seen so above this it's all nice and white below that you're never going to see it so don't really worry too much about what you put in there. Now for the next bit, we're going to be decorating this floor quite nicely. I'm going to go for a sort of checkered board pattern using brick. Come back and place some polished granite in there in a second. And that will look really nice and fancy. Now this style is something I've chosen just because for one, I like it. And two, it actually is typical of the style. So it does make this nice sort of coloured, this red section. Looks a bit more Mediterranean than anything else. But that's because during this time period, the Mediterranean styles were in fashion. So you're left with a bit of a, a ground like that, and then you go back through 
and place in some polished granite and that really helps the brick pop gives it this nice ceramic feel and it works really really well so the next job is for us to build the pagoda styled little balcony bit here the pagoda styled roof on the actual porch but we'll come around to that once we built the wall behind it so it's time now to copy and paste this over so we guys can get an understanding of how this whole build is starting to come together so let's do that technique is exactly the same as we did for the basement so that's the porch in on both sides now again looking great i do love what i've done with the floor there if i do say so myself so the next section now is to actually get the walls in so we can start building up the rest of this building now the idea is to just follow this around with polished andesite so we get a nice raised lip uh, and then it carries on all the way around the building you can see i started in the corner over there and with this we can then start putting on then we can start putting on the white concrete powder and the wall so it's a strange little texture this but i think it really really works like i mentioned you can do it obviously by hand rather than using world edit to texture the walls but i'm going to use world edit to texture the walls because for one it's a tutorial so you don't want to see me placing every single block down by hand unless you do then that's a little bit asmr but we'll leave that where that is so it's time to start that now we're going to start in this corner here so what you want to do is i tend to use a surrogate for my actual final product which is why i use world edit to help because without it it's really really hard to build in concrete powder unless you go back over and start texturing the walls so we're going to use just white wall for a second we're going to come back over and texture it later on using world edit and i'll show you how to do that so this remember needs to be 10 blocks across so it may be deceiving where you have this internal wall now do not follow that follow this one here which is actually the main be load bearing wall across the whole thing so we can even come back through and place this in there so it looks a little bit more understandable of where that needs to go so one block down like that so that's sort of like a, a main rafter through there it's easy to lose where you are in this place because there is so much going on so coming around here we need to fill up this whole entire bit so i'm going to go around and add this all in and then we can show you where the windows go okay so we have the white wall in place now like i said go back around texture it later on if you wish but right now it's actually easier if we just use it so it doesn't start collapsing on us so two blocks out there and that gives you the front doorway we'll come back around and place those with some doors in a second now what you've got to do is count off two blocks from the edge here one two and then knock out two blocks for the first window one two three and then two more for the second window so you've only got two windows here at the front they are two wide and they're four high and they are quite a nice little window detail so let's get that in and then we can turn this all into white concrete powder in a second so these windows should actually be sitting on something like this i tend to go for polished diorite for the base level here just gives it a nicer sort of bit of oomph to it so following this all the way around you come to this section here which needs to give you the sort of the window in the middle so the window itself is four blocks wide and now this is the main reason i've used trap doors as well um, this is going to be a window known as a Venetian window and that's where it has two smaller windows on one side and one larger window in the center in order to create this effect you do need to use trapdoors so you can use like I said birch or spruce trapdoors if you wish but I'm going to be using iron trapdoors with a debug stick so this window is four blocks high by four blocks wide it's a bit of a square and that's why you need to break it up using this technique so what you do is you add the the trapdoors down one side come back turn around and on the other adjacent block place it on the outer edge and you're left with a nice sort of smaller window that side we do the same over this one one two three four open those up with your debug stick and then you come back and place it facing that way one two three four so that leaves you with this nice interesting looking window gives you a nice bit of depth and a bit of detail to it and like I said, use whatever trapdoor you wish for that, but it does work. It does work really well with iron trapdoors. So I'm gonna fill up the rest of these walls so we can get this build going properly, uh, and then I'm gonna go around and add all the windows in. So let me just go around to the back and add those window sections in as well. So what I'm doing here is actually because this wall on this side doesn't have any windows on at all, I'm gonna set it to white concrete and white straight away, so we get that texture in the wall like that. And it's the same with this bit here so it's built up all the way up to this level so we're going up at the moment six blocks high from the actual level of the polished andesite and that's just a typical of this because of the way i've done the windows but what you want to do is when you come around to the back here we need to count in two blocks on each corner like so 
sorry, three blocks in each corner, and that leaves you with a window in the centre. But you may be thinking, hang on, we didn't centre that window below. Is this not going to look weird? No, because you can actually hide that behind the railing we'll put in there in a second. So this is actually all right like this. One, two, three, four. There we go. So you've got a nice high window at the back here. And because this actually carries straight down like that, we don't put a little um, thing up there. We could, what you can do is maybe add some quartz slab or something like that just to give you a nice little ledge. But apart from that, you don't really need to add any extra detail. So what I'm doing is going to turn this wall into the mixture we're going to use. I didn't really randomize it that much, but it looks okay. There we are. So that breaks up a little bit more. So coming around to the side here, what you want to do is build this round. Now, what we didn't mention earlier on is just how you can have like a little patio out the back here. Or if you're really feeling adventurous, a conservatory, which is what I added in my world when I built this one. But that's a bit too far into this build so what we're going to do is just basically use a small little patio section here and fill this in exactly like we did at the front with the checkered board uh, design of having just granite and bricks so let me just fill that in quickly okay so that's in place and then from there we want to drop down a couple of blocks let's place a little staircase in like so and that will lead you off down into the garden um, for this build, we're not going to do any landscaping as such. I will show you at the end how it looks in a landscape once it's finished. So for the stairs here, you want to be using uh, maybe some polished andesite stairs again or some stone brick stairs if you want to break up the texture a little bit. Now, a lot of this build is all just trying out ideas and styles. Um, so I wouldn't suggest copying me verbatim just because you may like it slightly differently to how I'm showing you. So what this does lead us to is a way to get in in a second. So we'll put in a little staircase, um, a little doorway, a little back door, so you can get out from there onto here. So second correction quickly, I've just noticed this actually needs to be two blocks up. So this is what happens when I forget that the whole build is actually built two blocks up further. So what we can do here is actually implement that same technique we did in the front, which is using the walls and the andesite and that gives us a nice little detail there so we're going to break out like that one two one two I feel like i'm testing a mic uh and then like so this is going to be like a, a wall that goes down through the garden so we'll think about that later on there we are so we've got a nice little raft in there i thought this was looking a bit small so there we go one two three and then we can have this coming down like so lovely stuff and as Bob Ross always said, there is no such thing as mistakes, just happy little accidents. And that was, that was a happy little accident. So we're going to finish off this little bit of railing around here. So what you want to do, place some polished andesites in the corner. And it's exactly the same as we did with the front. So you come out with some andesite stairs and put those across the back like so. Lovely stuff. And then across the top there, placing in the slabs of polished andesite again, gives you that nice little finish. So that is the back done uh, and to the extent it needs to be. We're going to carry on this now so we can get the actual wall in with the windows. And it is going to be a complete replica of the front as best as we can. So counting in from this side, we're going to go one, two, and then one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. Perfect. So that all matches up nicely. Got equal spacing. And you may be thinking, hang on, that's not two blocks away. It does line up nicely with this corner and it works quite well. So the back door itself is going to come out of um, the back door itself is going to come out of here. So this isn't going to need to be maybe two blocks wide there at the second. Or we can. It, it all depends on how you feel about having two wide back doors. So we're going to put in a doorway there, and that will come straight off of where the stairs come up. Okay, so let's build this wall up like so, and we're going to use the whole technique of turning that into white concrete powder again and yeah so again it's, it's quite a good little technique that uh, if you have any ideas on how you wish to do it a bit differently please let me know in the comments below i'm always open to suggestions i thought i would do this bit more orientated towards world edit because that is how i built this one now i don't use world edit as a clutch um it, as a so i try not to use World Edit as a crutch but it is a really really useful tool especially for building stuff out of materials that you wouldn't really use So we're carrying this up round like so. 
going to do this again and then fill this all in. So we need to get the polished andesite out again. Sorry, polished diorite and put that in the bottom pieces like that. And then for this, all the trapdoors up like so. And then we can go in on the inside and start placing out the floor plan. So would you add this build to your world? Let me know in the comments below whether you have a build, have a world that requires a building like this or would you build this and then build a town around it? Because it is quite a large townhouse, especially for some sort of important person. So you can see there we've got to the point where all the walls are built up around this section. What I am going to do now is go through and put in the floor. So for this, the floor level needs to be where the doors come in like this. So that sits a couple of blocks up off where we had the height here. So you can go back down and fill that back up so we have it all equal. But I'm going to go around quickly, probably jump to a quick time lapse of me filling in this floor so you guys don't have to see that in real time. Okay, so there we have it, the floor has been filled in and we now have ourselves a nice pallet to start building the internal walls on. So first things first is to come through and build this wall up like so. I'm going to use brick here just because that's the brick I've just chosen. So this needs to come up and it's your party wall between the two buildings. Now when we get onto doing the internals in a second, I'll show you how to put the fireplaces in so they can sit back to back and it will look really nice because it have a chimney breast. So let me put this up here. I'm using lime terracotta for my internal walls. I didn't mention that before. And that is because um, in the Georgian period and the Victorian period, they had green wallpaper like this. And it was actually lined with arsenic, um, which gave it this nice green colour. And a lot of people started getting ill um, in the period with arsenic poisoning when they had no idea they were near like tin or anything like that. Anyway, that's a side note in history, but it's quite a weird thing. They used to line their walls with a poisonous substance crazy stuff so this is now one whole building this side what we need to do is go around and add all of the internal double skin so I'm going to jump in to a quick time lapse again just while I place out all of the floor and then we can count out how big the rooms are and you guys can see how it all looks before we copy and paste it across so let's jump on into that time lapse okay guys so the first well the third amendment to this is the way the stairs work. So if we come back down into the basement, you'll notice I no longer have them going straight up. I knew this wasn't going to work because of the way the upstairs was going to get laid out. So what happens now is you go up one, two, three, come up to a landing like so, and then one, two, three, back up, and that brings you up into where this window is. Now you've got to turn back on yourself and walk back out this way onto the main corridor. So in here, this can be closed away so not everyone can go down into the basement. Nice little idea, don't you think? So that leaves you with that little stairwell there. Then we come into this bit here, into the hallway, and we get ourselves a second stairwell, which opens up into a bit more of a wider hallway. Now, wide hallways, again, is a Georgian trait as such. We can close this in a little bit like that, and then we can bring this wall all the way down this way. So you come in, and you've got a free wide hallway, and it gives a nice airy feel to the place. So this staircase will then carry them upstairs. We'll sort that out when we get to the next floor. Uh, and then for the rest of the room, this is pretty much it. So you've got what is going to be the kitchen. No, this is the dining room. So this would be where, you know, you come in, greet your guests, have, have some food. There'll be a fireplace in here in a second. And then over in the back here is a bit more of a sort of, we can put a cupboard in here or some sort of fixing a fixture. Doorway in there. And then this is where Georgian houses get even weirder. The master bedroom is on the ground floor. Yeah, I know, it's a weird, weird way of doing it, isn't it? But the thinking behind that is because the second floor, or the first floor, is actually the main reception room. So you have the parlour and the drawing room up there. And that is where you take your guests to and you get a better view across the town because you tend to have, you know, tall windows in that one. But for us for here, this is going to be the master bedroom. So it's a fairly small room, but it's actually bigger than any other bedroom in this house. So let me just fill in the rest of these walls, get these windows in, then I'll jump back and then we can do the porch out the front. Okay, so the entire insides are now built up. You can see this is how the building's gonna look from this floor. Like I said, you've got the dining room over here, 
The two stairwells, one going down, one going up there, the hallway in the center, taking you to the front and the back, and then the master bedroom on the right hand side. So that's quite a nice little neat layout. Um, in terms of actually dimensions for this, the drawing room, uh, sorry, the dining room is, you know, one block in because we've got the whole double skinned wall. Across this bit here, it's seven blocks. Then you get to the actual staircase, which is two blocks wide by six blocks back that way. And then you've also got this area here, which is in from the outside wall by four. Then you go along this way, seven blocks like so, eight blocks, sorry, back in like four. Uh, and then this one across here is 14 from uh, green terracotta to green. And that's kind of just your layout. If you want to take a screenshot now, please do, as that will help with the way you can design it. Although this building is fairly large and fairly open to interpretation. So please, if you don't feel my layout's very good, have a go at it yourself. So we're gonna come around now to the front door, little technique on how to make this door look a little bit larger because of the way children doors usually are. Gonna place a couple of trap doors hanging down from the ceiling like so, and you get like a little taller door. It looks all right, looks quite nice, and fill that up with the rest of the stuff. So what we've done now is we've built pretty much the entirety of the ground floor. We need to go around now and actually add the pagoda front bit. Now this is a little bit of a cool little thing. So I need to, so we're gonna go around now and build the little pagoda section at the front. But what we need to do first is go around once more and add another layer of the actual concrete powder mix. So let's do that quickly. Okay, so that is this building built up to the correct level now, which should be six blocks high as it is there. So you, again, you may be wondering, oh no, we're neglecting this side. Yes, it is a point of building either if you are in just normal creative, you are gonna have to be building both sides at the same time. For me, as I described for speed and ease of the video, it's much easier to build one side and flip it onto the other because the building is identical. So what we need to do now is go around and put the finishing touches above these windows. So I'm gonna be using some smooth quartz for that, just a block uh, above the window. And then we're gonna get on to doing the little porch. So go around like this, placing in the quartz above all of these windows, just helps break it up a little bit, gives it a bit more of a window box feel to it. A lot of these Georgian windows always were painted above. Uh, in the actual reference picture I had for this one, it didn't have any painted bits above, but I thought I could add some just to get a bit more texture and a bit more detail in there. Okay, so it's now time to start on the pagoda porch. So what you wanna do is grab out some diorite walls and place those in the middle of each of these walls like so and then one over here and one there. So what actually happens is we build two different types of wall, um, also one just here. So we build two different types of porch. We're gonna build one over the top of this and then one that comes from here and goes all the way back to here with a slightly different building style to it. I'll show you that in a second. So first of all, we need to come back through here and place in the, the iron fences like so and that connects it all in together now with the 1.16 connected textures problem. So once we've, once we've placed in all of the iron bars, it's time to go around and count one, two, three, four up without you know trying to annoy yourself too much by misplacing them. God, they're hard to place. So what I'm doing here is making the iron columns that are gonna support the pagoda styled roof. Now these corner ones are gonna be slightly larger, but the middle ones here only need to be one block wide. And that's just a little design choice. It doesn't really make any difference to the actual overall design but you need to count up four blocks like so, and then you end up with it like this. So what we've got going on here is this one lines up with that wall there. So one, two, three, four. This one lines up with the wall on the inside like that, because this is actually gonna be a separate roof from what we're gonna have over this one, which will become clear in a second. Okay, with well that all counted up to four, what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of depth to this one right now, like that. So with that done, we now need to place on the roof itself. So for this, okay, so we're gonna come here and place the actual stairs now for the roof. So on the corners or, or the pieces that actually have the iron railing, I'm gonna be placing in polished andesite stairs like so. And then in between those, I'm placing normal andesite stairs. Now the normal andesite stairs are there just to sort of work as a lead lined roof uh, and they give them right sort of texture and color. I know it's a bit of an odd one, but that's what I'm gonna use for it. So above this, we need to go up another block using the stairs again, fill this in while also maintaining having these polished ones on the same level. And that gives it a nice sort of ridge and furrow effect. Um, I don't know if it works, it just, in my head it does. 
And now the final level is actually going to be made out of slabs, so polished andesite slabs instead of stairs and normal slabs of andesite. Now the reason I've carried it on like this is, yes, you've guessed it, we're going to flip it over to this side. So it's a full length uh, pagoda, which I think will look really nice. So that's how we're looking so far with the ground floor. It's really starting to get a little bit of texture and a little bit of depth into the walls. Now it's time to start on this little roof here. So what we've got to do for this is go back over here and place two more pieces of diorite uh, walls in there and build up this iron railing so it's exactly the same as the front of the four there. Now this roof's going to be made out of stone brick stairs and then granite because I wanted to make this roof a bit more uh, unique than that one because this is actually in the reference picture I had this bit of roof was newer so I thought I might as well keep that little bit of detail in the actual build over here so on the corners what you want to do is place in place in polished granite like so and it's the same effect as we've done over there it's just all the way back this time to the roof over here but what we are going to do is go on its back on itself like so Ooh. and so you can get a nice little hipped roof instead of a actual flat roof again a nice little just detail that adds a bit of extra depth to this build and then we're going to go up one more level because that's all you can take on this one and hey presto we are done with that so there's one last thing i want to show you guys before we move on up to the next floor and that is where to place the fireplaces on the inside so take a good look at that that is how you're meant to be looking with this that roof like that and this roof like this so once that is done you are safe then to flip that over unless you haven't done the fireplaces inside which is what we have neglected to do right now so let's jump on into that okay so the the fireplace itself is going to be two blocks wide so we want four blocks across like this so you can have um, a nice granite surround on the inside so one two and then this carries on up the side like that so we've got a sort of chimney breast effect going on here now across the top i'm going to be using some more granite just granite looks quite nice as a fireplace i think in my honest opinion and on the floor because i've only got slabs in my hand i'm just going to place some slabs down now you may be thinking wow this is quite a dominating fireplace it is you don't actually have to add it if you don't want to um it's just my own take on how to do this now what i thought was quite a nice tip was using some of the new blocks here as a bit of a backdrop to this fireplace so if you look at fireplaces they're quite sooty and covered in soot at the back so i thought ah um, give it a nice little effect there and you can even go one step further as well and bring in maybe some neverite stairs to act as a little grate in front but you can also use what i was doing in my other build as well and that is using some polished blackstone uh, walls and put in there like a little grate so again just a little tip on how to do fireplaces um, and that allows you to then come back around this side and use exactly the same bit and build up you know your fireplace around that as well which i thought was quite a nice neat little thing to do anyway guys that's that let's time to move on upstairs so let me copy and paste this across so we can have the whole build on this floor and then we can move on up don't you copy and paste if you have to go back over and fix any little discrepancies it's always worth to just so you can get a cleaner image of what you want but there we have the ground floor of this beautiful georgian regency styled villa and you can see just on the inside how big this is. This is not a house for your common garden sort of middle class man. This is a house for a merchant or a really rich person of the time. And this would be lived in in a town or in a city as just a really nice big statement feature. So we've got the fireplace chimney breast in the middle here, which looks really nice, I think. Nice little period feature there. You would also probably put a fireplace in this one as well. And there'll be a chimney on the outside to reflect that. So that's all I've got for you in part one. We've made quite a lot of progress and it's good to see the build coming together. Join me in part two where we finish off the building itself, put the upper floors on and the roof. And then part three, of course, will be the landscaping and the garden. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.